Yesterday was CDPR's earnings call for their 2023 fiscal year. This finally giving us some updates about how much money they made or didn't from Phantom Liberty, and the result is pretty astonishing. But we also got some pretty interesting updates on Cyberpunk 2077 itself and its future, what you could expect around updates, as it seems like there is an incredibly slim chance that Cyberpunk 2077 may actually get something more one day. But at the very least from all of this, we got some news around the Cyberpunk sequel named Orion, and hey, Cyberpunk 2077 is even getting multiplayer, which we're going to talk about about a little bit later in this video. And we'll also talk about the latest Cyberpunk 2077 displays. You can pick up these high quality and easily swappable metal posters for yourself just by using my affiliate link below and even potentially get a discount. So one of the main takeaways from this earnings call is CDPR made a ton of money. The Cyberpunk 2077 story is largely over. The massive launch disaster to monumental comeback finally has some numbers behind it. And CDPR could definitely do a victory lap now because they made a lot of money from all of this. 2023 went down as the company's second best year ever, only behind 2020 with the release of Cyberpunk. And while of course a giant chunk of this revenue was from Phantom Liberty directly, there was also just a lot more people buying and playing Cyberpunk 2077 over 2023. And this chart specifically is the victory lap. Through 2023, Cyberpunk 2077 and Phantom Liberty generated $750 million for CDPR, which is absolutely insane when you consider how things were at launch. And this means there's a very realistic chance that over the next couple of years, Cyberpunk 2077 becomes a billion dollar game for CDPR. Now, of course, this is just revenue, it's not how much money they're actually taking home, but still, that is a gigantic number. Again, especially when you consider where this game started from. Although when it comes to Cyberpunk 2077, this is where things are really going to stand, at least for now. We see a new employee breakdown from CDPR, where it's revealed that Cyberpunk 2077 has just 17 devs working on the project at this point. During this, they go on to describe how they are very happy with the state of the game, and this team may even shrink further in the future. They talk about how there are no more major updates planned for Cyberpunk, but then we get this interesting comment right at the end of the earnings call that I think could mean something. We are finally, uh, since last year, very happy with, uh, with the state of the game, both uh, the base game and Phantom Liberty, Phantom Liberty from the very beginning actually, and uh, we think that this team is, is enough, uh, it might even shrink a bit. Uh, because as for now, we're not planning any any further big updates, but of course we are still looking at, at this game and things one day might, might change, but this, that's, as for now, 17 is enough. So this might just be a simple catch-all statement, like yeah, maybe something else comes in the future covering all bases, but there are two major lingering things that I could definitely see lead to Cyberpunk 2077 get another larger update. In the interim, the bigger updates are over. We're supposed to get FSR 3 support at some point, as well as there are a couple of lingering bugs, so a couple of smaller updates to add each of those things will likely come at some point in 2024. But something else that definitely could end up coming to Cyberpunk 2077 are more proper mod tools. They're doing this right now for The Witcher 3. It was announced last year that official mod tools would be coming to the game at some point in 2024. Now, I wouldn't be shocked if, after that drops for The Witcher 3, the same exact team will move over to Cyberpunk to implement the same thing. Cyberpunk 2077 is using an updated engine, so there would be difficulties around that, but at the same time, this game is a lot more popular on the modding side compared to The Witcher 3, so I think this could make sense. But also perhaps another tie-in update. We of course had that Edge Runners update as the show launched, but CDPR is also working on another piece of Cyberpunk media. They partnered with Anonymous Content, who worked on a ton of stuff, like The Nick, True Detective, 13 Reasons Why, and more. This partnership was announced late last year, and how a new original piece of live-action content would be developed in the Cyberpunk universe. It seems like this will be a TV series, as many TV people are working on this one. But during this most recent earnings call, we hear how things are steadily progressing on this project, despite their not being any other updates to share, and how CDPR expects projects like these to keep revenue flowing in the gap in between games, with the CEO commenting on how this project will likely be here by 2025 at the earliest. And I would totally expect another small-scale in-game tie-in for the series whenever it does drop. To go along with this earnings call, CDPR also had an investor chat on stockwatch.pl, and here we got the answer to one of the most asked questions. Why didn't they make a second expansion for Cyberpunk 2077? Phantom Liberty was a great complement to the base game, and at the same time, the closure of this story and work on our existing technology. Phantom Liberty is CDPR's last project on Red Engine before moving fully over to Unreal Engine 5. We decided to start working on the next big game in this universe, Orion, well in advance. Thanks to this, it will be ready faster. And as far as I can tell, this is the first time we've actually heard this mentioned. 
that a second Cyberpunk 2077 expansion was forgone in place of just working on the sequel earlier. And to me, this makes quite a bit of sense. Pretty early on into Cyberpunk 2077, they likely realized that the Cyberpunk IP was one with a ton of potential. I mean, even with its incredibly controversial launch, the game still sold a ton of copies. But they probably also realized that fixing the game would end up being quite expensive. So perhaps they saved some costs by making one larger expansion instead of delaying a more profitable sequel by tying up the teams on a second expansion for years to come. And to me, this just makes a lot of sense. Whatever Orion ends up being called, you could almost guarantee it's going to be an incredibly well-selling game. And I imagine the clock was ticking. Phantom Liberty came out almost a full three years later. It might have been another year or two before we got a second sequel. So for CDPR, it likely just makes a lot more sense to move on to the next thing as opposed to sticking with Cyberpunk 2077 for around five years. And speaking of, we also just got a bunch of updates on Orion and the other future titles from this earnings call. Orion is, of course, the Cyberpunk 2077 sequel, and they reveal it is currently in a conceptual phase. Work on this one began in Q4 2023, right after things wrapped up with Phantom Liberty. As of right now, there are just under 50 devs on this project. And we got quite a bit more color on the current status of Orion from an interview with the game director last month. They describe how we're in that stage, but it's it's kind of blurred, like prototyping some things as well as concepting some stuff and working on the story. So yeah, we got some prototypes going on, we've got some exploration, some pipeline setup, some story ideas being thrown at the wall, back and forth, concept art, that kind of phase, the fun phase. Last month, CDPR revealed some of the major names working on Orion right now. Many of the director-level devs in Cyberpunk 2077 were pulled over and are now building out a new Boston studio for this project, but there have also been a variety of new hires. Several names that worked on titles like Diablo 3, Hitman, and even Mortal Kombat, perhaps most notable are the main writers have been hired for this. One writer with almost a pure gaming background, having worked on Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, the new Fable game that didn't even release yet, and even Control. While the other major writer is going to be somebody who was a New York Times best-selling author and comic book writer who led the writing on Star Wars The Old Republic. So a pretty interesting mix that I definitely think could lead to some very promising results with Orion. Although conversely, the next Witcher game is far further along. This codename Polaris is currently sitting at 400 devs with another 50 devs pitching in via its shared services. CDPR describes how shared services are basically devs who rotate around working on various titles, not just one specific thing. Right now, Polaris is in pre-production, but they describe how later this year it will enter into full production. During the earnings Q&A, we get the question most of you are probably thinking right now. If it goes into full production later in 2024, can we start applying past timelines of around two to three years in full production before release? Somebody asked this, and CDPR responded saying, these timelines may not translate perfectly since they are now using agile Agile and Unreal Engine 5 compared to Waterfall and Red Engine previously. And I honestly think this transition could be one of the biggest things happening at CDPR right now and really going forward. And it's one of those things I think a lot of you should be excited for. Waterfall and Agile are two different development styles. With Waterfall, which is what CDPR was using previously, you basically make everything in waves. It's a more gradual and long process that should end up being a lot more predictable with a lot more research done beforehand. Conversely now, CDPR has moved over to Agile development, starting with Phantom Liberty, this has you more quickly making individual features that can be used and then iterated upon. So as a simple example with Cyberpunk, Agile is making this one gun really fast and having a rough version of it implemented. And then you have a bunch of people test it, implement their feedback, and move on. Where Waterfall would be more doing a bunch of research into all of the various weapons you want to add to the game, modeling out each individually, then animating them, and over time implementing and testing every single weapon. The problem with that, of course, being that since it is such a bulk and gradual process, you could end up with something you really don't like because it takes a while to actually get it implemented in game. Agile allows for a lot more feedback and actually working smarter based on that feedback. And like I mentioned before, if you liked Phantom Liberty, you should like CDPR using Agile. That was their first project using this, and I think it was a phenomenal example of what can be done. They're going to be using the exact same director as well as many of the same techniques for the Cyberpunk sequel. So as these two different development styles pertain to release schedules, it very well could lead to faster releases in the future. If CDPR previously was running into a ton of development hurdles where basically issues would pop up towards the end of development and things would have to be resolved, hypothetically switching to Agile could get rid of a lot of that and speed up development. But it also could end up taking longer because they're now using a new engine and using a bit of a different development process. Or it could lead to no real change and things might just come out in two to three years as they did previously. Just because they're doing something differently doesn't mean it's going to be faster, but based off Phantom Liberty at the very least, CDPR is definitely flowing a bit better with Agile compared to Waterfall, which they of course used for Cyberpunk 2077's 
original release. In beyond that, we got a couple of other new details from CDPR. They describe how they do not see a place for microtransactions in single player games, specifically their future single player games. So for the most part, hopefully their future titles will be microtransaction free. And it very much so feels like this was a Dragon's Dogma 2 question. The new CEO of CDPR took to Twitter to confirm that their future titles will continue to be platform agnostic. So releasing for everyone and basically on all platforms and not really playing that exclusivity game. But CDPR also has a quintuple A game in the works. Okay, so no, not exactly. You've probably seen those headlines of Ubisoft calling their new games Quad A instead of just Triple A. So somebody jokingly asked them if CDPR will upgrade as well and not just make Triple A games, to which they responded saying they'll start making Quintuple A games instead, but also multiplayer games. They mentioned how we could expect multiplayer in future projects like Sirius, but I also wouldn't be shocked if they add multiplayer to Polaris and Orion as well. From their previous strategy updates, we've seen that CDPR views multiplayer as a major opportunity opportunity for them and their IPs, and they had extensive plans to add this to Cyberpunk 2077 before that ended up getting scrapped. And even though they did give up on that project, modders haven't. Over the last few years, I've been highlighting some of the progress made on the Cyberpunk 2077 multiplayer mod, known as CyberMP. We've seen some of the simple, two players on a server, and even more recently, those two players actually interacting and really just playing the game together. But the most recent update to the mod is by far the biggest yet, because it did have a successful public test. Various people from the community being able to connect to the same Cyberpunk 2077 server and then have a 2v2 deathmatch against each other. Which frankly is just, like, insane. Like, yeah, it's not quite perfect. Some of the animations, especially when dying, aren't quite there yet. But at the same time, it is phenomenal and way better than it has any right being. The sync particularly looks really good in between players. Even when you're damaging other players, it looks like that damage is registering almost immediately. And there are even other nice little features on top, like a kill feed and being able to see your current score. Not to mention, this was just the first test. You have to imagine as time goes on, and even what was learned from this test will be implemented to only improve this mod even further. If you do want to learn more, I'll have a link to the CyberMP Discord down below. But modders aren't just adding in multiplayer and new quests may be crossing a new milestone soon on. as the CyberScript devs also just posted this work in progress video on a new Mama Wells quest around visiting Jackie's grave. This one too is seriously pushing things forward on the custom quest content side and could definitely open up some incredibly interesting possibilities as far as Cyberpunk 2077 mod modding goes. I'll have links to both of those down below if you want to look a bit closer, but otherwise, click here if you're looking for some of the amazing mods to download for Cyberpunk 2077 right now, some of which can truly overhaul your game.